Hey, good afternoon, Jeff. Hey, Amir, how's it going? Not too bad, and you? Yeah, I'm doing well. Uh, how did it go two weeks ago? Uh, pretty good. We got kind of stuck <laughs> with discussion. I guess that's good. So <laughs> let's see. We were. I'm looking at the list. I can't remember exactly where we were. Okay. <laughs> Looks like there's about just about under 20 left. Yeah. About about 20. I figure we could uh, filter. Let's see. Just the not decided yet. Okay. Well, I guess while we have some time, uh, just uh, the two of us, I wonder if we'll have a light meeting today because of the timing, but uh, yeah. I wonder how we could, I'm trying to think about ways that we could do this in a much, I guess, simpler way, or maybe like a, I don't know, just uh, maybe just a, a way that is less labor intensive. Mm -hmm. Um. I wonder if, if, you know, if there, if it makes sense to think about, you know, maybe what we could do, you know, potentially something that's more sustainable or maybe that requires less maintenance. Um, I wonder if that's, if that's crossed your mind or if that's something worth talking about. Yeah, I think it is. Um, I mean, I like the way that we're doing it right now. Um, I think that the thing that, you know, we do live that we could do, you know, automatically is get the, uh, get some of the numbers that we look for. Mm. Um, so we'll go look at like, if it's Python package, we'll look at the downloads count on Python. If it's an NPM, we'll look at the download count on NPM. Um, we'll go look at the... I guess the GitHub page and see like how busy it is. I guess criticality score incorporates that. So like we need to, we should have criticality score here to look at. So I, I think the work um, that Randall started would be good at doing that, you know, helpful to do this faster where essentially everything that gets suggested gets um, some automation run that pulls all this data that we can then use to, to do this in the future. Mm. that makes sense yeah absolutely yeah i think a lot of these we come across you know sound important and then we just need somebody to say like they're you know that it is widely used or some data that shows that it's widely used and um, if we don't have if we don't have that there's a it's hard to say yes to <laughs> yeah yeah Um, yeah. Hey, David. Hi, David. Hello. Hi um, there. All, all of the America's people helping <laughs> Asia who didn't show up. <laughs> uh, Caleb did message me. He said he's gonna. He said he's gonna join, but fit ten ten minutes late. <laughs> so. Do we have any more information about this? Um, list from alpha omega of the whatever the 10,000 projects and how we want to uh not that i know of that's not already in the issue that they created and linked to the question i had for like jonathan is if you know we like i think for all the kind of initiatives that this working group has we want to have somebody just kind of say like they're the leader of it uh and they're kind of on the hook for making, you know, pushing it forward and trying to get 
you know, the new version or the the new iteration? And is he going to sign up for that or or is he looking for people, other people to do it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's kind of the main question I have. Well, I think there's a question for this working group of what we want to do with this. I mean, do we want to use that as the new input or do we trying to manage that as a separate parallel track or? Uh, it seems to me like it's separate and you know more automated clearly based on its its size. Um, I don't think like a ten thousand list would be helpful for us to like try to consider all those <laughs> as an input. Mm. It's too long. I think yeah, I think it can definitely serve as a reference point. You know, for looking for justification and. You know, we have them as a reference, you know, that list as a reference, as a reference. I don't know if we should necessarily just move forward simply because it's on the alpha uh, 10,000 list, but I think it should definitely be considered if it's on there, you know. Oh, I agree, but I mean, I thought that, I mean, I guess, um, uh, like I said, that, that we were trying to automate how we were going to approach the next iteration of our list. And so, I mean, yeah, I agree it's not practical to use that as an input and actually still do this manual process, but I'm not certain that it's really practical to. To continually have this, this manual process for determining what's a critical project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, and uh, it's actually what Jeff and I were talking about as you joined. Uh, we were talking about, you know, what what can we explore to automate this process a little more or make it a little bit less labor intensive, um, but still, you know, um, impactful and, you know, have that level of scrutiny. And um, But yeah, I, I would agree that it, it does seem a bit uh, labor intensive now. <laughs> Um, the way that we're currently a bit, yeah. Um, so, you know, we're definitely all ears. Uh, Jeff mentioned uh, the work that Randall's doing to at least pull some automated data when a, when a project gets um, nominated, so to speak. Um, and that's probably a good first start or first step. Yeah, but I mean, I th again, I think there's I mean, two things that have continued to sort of not me about this group, which is both what's the input and what's the output. I mean, I, I mean, I know what the I mean, what we have now is the input, like, but I mean, like, what that I mean again that we could use this this alpha omega list as as sort of a new starting point for the input, and then develop some automated um, analysis around that, where it, it sort of kicks out um, for manual review some things that it the things are on the edge. But but use that as a starting point, and the other is again sort of like okay, we're creating this list, but I don't really have a sense of where this list fits into the over, overall Open SSF pipeline in terms of okay, you know we have it, so it feels to me very arbitrary. Like we have this arbitrary, you know, list. I mean, of, you know, people have nominated things, whatever. We got this other with you know GitHub Star, whatever they think we got this arbitrary list, and we are honestly subjectively analyzing that and just sort of voting uh, I mean not not that we don't have you know rationale behind it but it's sort of this arbitrary okay we pick these critical projects and then it gets sent off into the ether <laughs> it's like so mm -hmm. I, mean, I think part of the problem we have again from the beginning is that there isn't a clear and, and I don't know whether it's the the TAC should be helping with this or the executive director I mean like but somewhere like okay who exactly is going to consume this and what did they want? Because then that would sort of drive back as a forcing function. What are we trying to, you know, how do we need 10,000? Is it, you know, 100? Like it, you know, right now there's, we're creating this, you know, very potentially important result, but there's no consumer for it. And without mm -hmm. that driving force, without that constraint, it, I think it's sort of the project is sort of drifting or this working group is sort of drifting. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I could think of two immediate ways, um, and, and it's kind of what I would say has driven 
um, I guess my research or my um, contributions, I guess, as to, you know, which projects are critical. Um, but, you know, um, as part of this working group, kind of when it first started, I pitched, you know, doing like a managed audit program where, you know, we would go out and do security audits of, you know, these important critical open source projects because, you know, statistics show most of them have never received any kind of, um, you know, like independent third party review and um, pitched, um, I think it was something like 25 projects where, you know, we, we took a bunch of input, including things like the census two data, um, some of the other research that was presented here in this work group, um, you know, and kind of recommended those projects. Um, and those did feed a lot of the kind of the original list that we had here. Um, and then you have, you know, Project Alpha, which is, you know, looking to seek out, you know, what are the really important open source projects that, you know, they could potentially put money towards, um, you know, to produce security outcomes. One of them being, you know, stuff like what we do where, you know, we could get input as to which projects to go out and, and do security audits for, for example. Um, and that does tie in, I guess, with, you know, Stream 7 and uh, the mobilization plan. Um, but I don't think that's necessarily the only use for this um, data. I think, you know, a lot of people are interested in knowing what are the open source projects, um, you know, that are being consumed like, at, a, at, a, at a very, very widely and um, this can be, a, I guess, another data point, but it is a very good point. You know, I would love to get your thoughts, uh, both David and Jeff, as to, you know, what does a North Star look like in terms of, you know, if we could determine, let's say, you know, what the output of this is or what the 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 purpose of this is, what would that look like and and what would it take to to get to that uh, level? So I definitely love to hear from from both of you. I mean, just just to wrap around, like I think, you know, I don't I don't have concrete um, examples. I don't I don't remember the the formation, but it was it was about awareness too. Like the XKCD is is the kind of guiding, uh, you know, what the 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 one on our home our GitHub page, the, 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 the graphic, Nebraska, yeah, right? Nebraska. It's yeah. kind of like the guiding thing, which is basically like if we can find these projects, which people everybody said everybody agrees is critical, but aren't getting the attention that maybe they should be, um, that can help, you know, help the whole ecosystem. And um, we're not, we're, our, 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 we're not judging like how much attention each project is getting, but we are trying to find like all the critical ones so that, so that somebody that, you know, is trying to do that can, can see that. And I think this question came up in different working groups and different um, efforts in, in the open SSF uh, previously, which is like, Oh, I want to. I want to like go check the top ten projects and see if they're doing um, X right. Like if they're using two FA uh, or two yeah. FA, are they using um, linting or whatever static analysis? Are they doing fuzzing? Are they doing X, Y, and Z? You know, I want to run uh, these analysis on them. So it, the the questions came up, you know, in, from multiple places, like. What are the top projects and and you know because I want to I want to take take a look at all of them for for one reason or another, uh, but you know I don't have all that today like that was in the past so like maybe something we should do so my idea I had when you're talking David was like do a, a little bit of a roadshow like we we've been doing this for a while and a lot of people have joined the Open SSF and and started different efforts in the different working groups. So maybe we need to go and like publicize our effort, what we're trying to build uh, and what um, people might want to use it for or what they're already using it for. Because, you know, people can be using our list and not be telling us about it. Well, uh, I, I agree with the latter. Yeah. So by yeah, Roadshow, I mean, go around to like each um, other working group in the next few months and just just do a little presentation on our working group and, and gather that information. Because I, I agree that would be helpful for us if we have today like what people are using it for and and why yeah i agree that we should definitely publicize this more and again we can not not just ourselves but you know 
ask the tech. I'm not sure what our next tech update is or to, you know, you know, help them introduce us to this or the executive director and, you know, try to, um, you know, maybe write I don't know, a blog post or something for the OpenSSF webpage. I mean, you know, trying to publicize it that way. But yeah, I mean, as far as what I'd like to be a North Star, I mean, I was assuming that this would actually feed into, for example, Alpha Omega, that this would be sort of like the list of, you know, here are these, you know, large and small, here's these important projects that Alpha Omega should consider funding. And so, but then Alpha Omega seems to have its own list of 10,000, which comes back to that. So that's why I'm saying that we're sort of, um, you know, and, and again, get some hints or recommendations or advice or mentoring from, you know, the leadership of the open SSF of, okay, how can we actually engage in a, more of a pipeline here, figuring out, you know, not just publicizing we have this, but, you know, is this useful to anybody or, because again, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, it seems that Alpha Omega may have created its own with this list 10,000 alternative version of this, <clears throat> or at least something with a similar purpose. And so that's where it's a question of, okay, now we're we getting sort of mixed messaging or these multiple lists inside you know, the, the OpenSSF as a whole. The 10,000 list is project. the Omega list, right? And then the, the, the list we're working on right now would be like the alpha list, which would be separate. So Omega is like 10,000 um, oh. automated, uh, in our, you know, automated help and alpha is a small amount of, uh, projects and hands-on help. So Top we 10 K OSS project, which we're using as a target for security scanning. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, I'm reading over the issue now. Um, Yeah, they refer to it every time as Alpha Omega. Um, it doesn't specifically say if it's what it is for. Uh, it just says it's they've collected a list of top 10K OSS projects, which we are using as a target for security scanning, vulnerability reporting, and in the future as a list of projects that any automated bulk PR generation campaign is required to report vulnerabilities privately to. Okay, and they're just proposing that we own that list, both to avoid confusion between the lists. Okay, yeah. So, yes, Jeff, I think you are spot on in what you're um, in the point you just made. So, but it looks like at the end of the day, too, also to go back to your point, is that I feel like at the end of the day, everyone is going to take this information and and in a, and and process it differently in that you know no there this is def i feel like this is never going to apply to everybody so people will always be able to say you know let's say if they're doing research on just one specific ecosystem um you know so they'll take whatever we come up with for example and probably filter it by their ecosystem for example um and yeah, I'm 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 glad we cleared that up because I I was unsure exactly how that ten thousand list fit in, but it definitely looks like it's meant to be something completely separate. Um, it's just something that Alpha Omega uh, generates and has been using for you know some of their bulk scanning uh, efforts, uh, which fall under the Omega side of of that project. By the yeah, way, but, I, I mean, I you... But even when we were doing our analysis of the the last couple of projects for our set, I mean, we were comparing stuff on Alpha. I mean, it's around the ten thousand list as well, um, as a you know an, an, another signal for deciding. Yeah, right? It's, it's not just Omega, but I mean, the other thing is, I mean, I'll just say that based on what I've seen in the Open SSF TAC and some of the other working groups that. Um, Many other people are there with a, um, I don't, with, with a with a a very specific point of view and a very specific action and a very specific outcome, um, 
honestly, possibly for their own company in addition to the Open SSF. So I'm just saying that that you know, to be honest, that you know, if, that I think that we um, that this SIG, I mean, not that it has to, but it could be more assertive and take a and if it wants to have more of an impact that we should try to not that we have to but we should decide amongst ourselves or somebody wants to join that won't be two things i mean either amongst ourselves we decide you know that we want to have a stronger voice and have some specific goal in mind and here's the list and the openness is should do something with this and then drive that because but also if we are somewhat honestly i mean just as a as a a risk that if we are overly passive and the SIG exists in the open SSF and with all of the bureaucracy and paraphernalia, whatever you want to say around it, that it sort of invites someone to come in and take over the SIG for their own purposes. Like if we don't have a strong purpose, um, somebody can step in and because it, it's already an established SIG within the open SSF and drive it for their purpose so like either either we do either we take control of this or somebody else not yeah. that they will i mean it it, it provides an, a an opening that yeah. may not be healthy uh, yeah I, I agree i like i think we do need to do more publicis publicizing our work um i i fully expect for us to once we have this this list finished to do a round of um media or you know like uh outreach like the yeah blog and whatever kind of you know get on the newsletter all that kind of stuff because we want to tell everybody like the open ssf has a new set of critical projects um and that's that's it like we're we're making the set for the for the foundation i don't think there's another group that could claim that they have a different better set um at least in the realm of about 100 to 200 <laughs> you know the 10,000 is, is a different category right um, so yeah, I, I definitely want to do a lot of, um, uh, publicizing of our list once it's done. Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to say what's it for, like, cause we just don't know that at right now. Um, but in that, like publicizing and getting people to look at it, I think it, yeah, what you're saying makes sense that we can get more input on what people do want to use it for to help us, uh, for the next round in the future. I'm, I'm late to this conversation, but um, I'll also mention uh, Google internal, oh, Google had a blog post about uh, our open source security upstream team um, recently, and they use the output from criticality score as well to inform their work and where they focus their efforts. So, um, I mean, that's just an example of somebody externally using this. Um, there are p enough people uh, also on the um, Criticality School project in GitHub who are appear to be lurking around um, logging bugs and stuff. So people are kicking the tires. I'm not sure exactly um, how they may be using that part of this work, but um, yeah, certainly there is interest in it. Um, it would yeah. be nice to know who if people are looking at this data and using it internally for themselves. Yes. Um, yes, go ahead, David. No, no, no go ahead, please. Um, I was just going to say uh, that I did in the notes, I started a one sentence, you know, if we can get it in one sentence, um, what the purpose of this, what the purpose of this effort is and what the purpose of the output of this is. Um, so I invite everyone to uh, look at that or collaborate on that. Uh, but I think that would be a good uh, a, a good place to start. And I think you're absolutely right, though, uh, David, that um, if, if certain things aren't driven, then they will find themselves having drivers. So um, I'm in agreement with you on that. Um, so I'd say yeah, the sooner we can get agreement on this and then um, maybe even run that by tack just to maybe get some awareness around it uh, as well, um, probably wouldn't hurt. Um, but in general, um, to put it in a sentence, I've always considered this as 
basically, you know, these are projects that are important that could probably benefit from additional resources. Um, but one thing that I, I, I don't want it to necessarily detract from the conversation, but I wonder if, because Jeff, you did bring up a very good point about the, you know, kind of the, the in, in some ways, the, the, the graphic, the XKCD graphic kind of being our mantra and a lot, or kind of guiding guideposts in a lot of ways. So I wonder if that's kind of a natural progression in this work is maybe identifying uh, projects that are under resourced yeah, or I agree. might be, yeah. you know, single maintainer or those, mm -hmm. basically those projects like, like Jackson Core and Jackson Databind that, you know, we did audits for last year, you know, that's, you know, it comes up on all the critic, you know, all the stuff and it's, you know, one guy basically maintaining it you know yeah. so like yeah. um, and that would be yeah exactly a second a second phase on our, our our list is can we identify what's critical and now we can take off like vs code and the linux kernel that are well funded you know <laughs> and uh look at the ones that are uh, yeah underserved yeah yeah i mean you bring up a good point um even though pro projects that are well funded but I think the reason I, I kept that so vague, you know, can benefit from additional resources. I'd love to bring up the example of Git, for example. Um, you know, we did the the security audit for Git um, last year. Uh, I'll be talking about it next week in Vancouver. But, you know, we actually got some pushback initially um, saying, you know, oh, Git's like such a long established project, you know, probably gets a lot of scrutiny. And, you know, and that is, in fact, the case. But I'm still, you know, third party audit, you know, getting that different perspective from an expert, you know, we were able to help them a bunch. So um, I think I think that's why I, I worded it as vaguely as I could, you know, that projects that can benefit from maybe additional security scrutiny or would that be too specific? Um, I mean, I think it's it's a better. I mean, I think we should just define critical because we're saying these projects are critical <laughs> mm -hmm. in, in which mean in which case like a security incident or bug would cause you know large widespread problems in the computer industry <laughs> or in the, in the mm -hmm. world <laughs> um So yeah. projects that are generally lacking in resources. Yeah, um, I don't think we should say the lacking in resources stuff. No. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, we we it's just like we want to we want to simplify each step of our decision making, right? So each so right now we want to think only critical. You know, is it critical or not? And not consider is it a, you know what the frequency or possibility of that bug or uh, uh, attack is, um, or how how funded the project is. That could be a second filter, so a second decision. Mm -hmm. Okay, I I guess I was just thinking of I guess going back to that to that you know what is the purpose of this set? So yeah, it is yeah. the purpose. So so so. I agree. Like once we find a list of critical projects, the the purpose is then to look for ones that need help or, you know, or if you want to help a project, look at this list, maybe use some other decision, other, yeah. you know, criteria to decide which ones you want to help. Yeah. And that, that relates back to what I was going to come about. Caleb is that we have this securing critical projects and then we have the criticality score and I'm one of, you know, do we have a well-defined relationship between the two? I mean, they... yeah. I mean, we should be using criticality score as an indicator on our on our decision making here, which gets back to like what I was saying for our faster decision making. We should we need all that automated to get pulled up every time we get a submission. Um, well, but but that's actually one of the things I honestly was concerned about. One reason I joined is that that um, I mean, there are certain biases that are built into the criticality score. Yeah, and I think we as humans take that into account when we uh, when we look at the score and consider that as a reason to be critical or not. So, um, yeah, I agree there, and and I think those are well known. 
Yeah, and we're trying to uh, the score itself ideally would improve over time so that it um, is less biased and better reflects like the output of a manually curated list. Um, so that's like ideally that would be the case that we can trust more and more the score itself, the output from the automated tool um, over time. But definitely you'd still want someone to like sanity check it and go, that's ridiculous, get rid of it. Yeah, I mean, you know, part of the, I think part of the challenge, I mean, again, I you know, been, uh, work on GCC, which is not a part of GitHub. And I mean, there's all sorts of, so there's, you know, when you start it, you know, many of the older projects don't necessarily have the, um, the signals, the automated or the mechanical signals that, yeah, <clears> which is criticality. We wouldn't, we wouldn't yeah. say something, you know, is disqualified because it has a low criticality score because it's not no, no. GitHub. Right, right, right. No, no, I understand. But I'm just saying in terms of, you know, how to automate this. And these are some of the... Yeah, the automation things. part's hard. Like, yeah, you got to take all these signals. You got to... If you come up with an algorithm, it's going to be flawed. Or, you you know, you, you that's why we have to do this as humans, you know. But the more the more we can automate, the more we can combine scores and metrics, yeah. to, you know, the better. Uh, except that just helps us do our job faster. But I think we still need to always have that kind of uh, curation. Right, but then there's also this issue with criticality score. Of, you know, let's see. You know, now this this large push from Google and Microsoft and others about memory safe languages, and like all of a sudden, is that you know, is that now a requirement that if you aren't using these, you get a black mark or a red mark or whatever for not? I think that's. I think you're thinking of scorecard. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. You know, we can look score it low, but I don't think that should affect the criticality score. Yeah, the the largest, uh, and this is something that I'd like to change soon, but it probably depends on more sources of this data, which is like the the graph and and how projects relate to each other. So the biggest signal we have, or the strongest signal we have, is um, the dependency relationships. And as you mentioned, projects like um, GCC and other C and C plus plus, particularly based projects, have very poor automated ways to like collect that graph data. So um, we have thought about other approaches to that, such as like, can we look at the distros of Linux and how they um, relate projects together as a, as a way that helps us um, understand that. Um, but there are other things like S where, as S bombs become more popular, we may yeah. be able to answer that question as well in a different way. So the, yeah, over time, hopefully we get, can, can, can get better data. Well, I, 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 yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I mean, just to, to highlight this, I was actually, you know, working very closely with my colleague at, at Red Hat, Carlos O'Donnell, who leads GLibc and I mean, just about the general um, oversight and leadership of the GNU tool chain and, and looking at, you know, trying to do our own analysis for other things and looking at, for example, Red Hat or Fedora. <clears throat> And how many of the packages in there actually depend on GCC or on GLibc? And it's actually, you know, it's not a lot because it's sort of it, it's it's pervasive. So they don't actually explicitly list it as a requirement. They'll list, for example, Clang or Clang because that's actually a, you know a deviation from the norm. So there's actually really lacking data even there. Like the entire um, like you know ninety nine or you know ninety percent of the distro should depend upon these packages or, you know, lib standard C++ or lib GCC and, you know, glibc, but it doesn't actually explicitly list it because it's just a, a given base level. So yeah, you can't even use that as a dependency tree. Just, just, just. Yeah. To... <laughs> so yeah. we, we might have to manually great, like say <laughs> like these, these projects are uh, like implicitly like implied. Um, right. If you want to know what depends on LLVM or Clang, that's easy to find. Out. Yeah. Yeah, GCC is a lot trickier. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So I, it's it is a tough problem to crack. Um, yeah, I don't have good answers <laughs> for how to solve that in the short term, uh, which is why yeah. I, I think having a manual process, right. um, yeah, it isn't like really important at the moment to make sure that those ones are not overlooked. Right, but anyways, it's just an anecdote to confirm exactly your what we've been saying about how to the difficulty of analyzing this. But yeah, yes. So I did my best at writing the purpose of our set. So I invite you all to tear it up and include comments. And um, 
but I really tried to keep it as high level as possible. <laughs> And I actually really like that I use the word highly important because we've used critical too much, too many times. Yeah, I was exactly looking to see what word you to use. <laughs> Self-referential definition here. Yeah, it? exactly. Um, the, no, the really, right. really, really important. <laughs> <laughs> Criticality school pro, uh, has a weird, different, like tries to define it not in a circular way um as its influence and importance um Ooh. which is very <laughs> very uh loaded terms um uh, influence is interesting uh, more so than importance importance is often like um a lot like either directly it's we depend on it or indirectly it's a part of our like uh, infrastructure or something like that um but yeah that that's a, a yeah it's definitely hard to actually <laughs> what is critical <laughs> Yeah, and, and and my intention from the beginning was always to not get too caught up in the details of it because it's one of those that you know, and sadly here we are two years later. Uh, but I but we're definitely making progress, and I I think you bring up good points though about you know maybe taking a step back and you know really defining what is the purpose of this and you know who is meant to consume this and um you know and go from there really and i do, i do agree that um maybe getting some guidance from the tac uh, especially if we feel like maybe we're at a point where we could use some direction um, I feel like they would be a good place to start. Hmm. With the rem remaining time, do you think we can go through the remaining? I think we've got like 17 left on not decided yet for the candidates. Yeah, let's do some voting. Sure. Let's do it. I will uh vote, 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 vote. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I will share my screen for simplicity. I'll just do my desktop and hide that. Okay. Okay, so I filtered by not decided yet. Um, I think on Lib WebSockets last meeting we said we'd wait for some more okay. details. Okay. Let's skip that one. And then we have Open EBS. Well, very familiar with this one. Kubernetes, okay. Mm. Are they, uh, I was going to say, I wonder if they're CNCF project, and sure enough, they're there. <clears throat> yeah, I might, I, I've been feeling like almost anything that's like Kubernetes related is like too new to be widely used enough to be critical, except for maybe Kubernetes itself, which I think we have. <laughs> mm. It's like, oh, this is something for, you know, this is a, a cluster storage system that we want people to use, you know, like, yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know. What do y'all think? Mm, that's a tough one. Oh, shoot. Generally, I would, I would say I agree. All right. It's the sandbox so, project too. Does he need yeah. to be around that long? We're gonna let's say no. Yeah, no, no evidence of widespread use. Uh, okay. 
They call themselves the leading open container attached storage, but still. <laughs> and they're the only container attached storage. No, I'm just kidding. Um, all right. O R Y Hedra. Widespread adoption. I mean, I would just say no. Yeah, I think we were leaning up. Maybe we didn't get to finish the conversation here. But... Yeah. All right. Yeah, I don't see it on the 10,000 list even. So well, I, 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 I think it's more it, like it's definitely more significant than EBS as far as Google searches and other indicators suggest. But yeah. Okay. Who's using it? All right, next we have Percona. So I kind of um, argue against these kind of things that are monitoring stuff because it's not like, okay, so that it says here, single pane of glass to easily view and monitor performance of your MySQL, Mongo, Postgres databases, database monitoring solution. So like by default, these are like reading they have read access to your infrastructure and they're not like in any kind of critical path. Um, maybe it's not like a user flow of data. It's, it's monitoring. Like if your monitoring software went down. What yeah. Happens? Yeah. Is it, is it managed by a company as well? It, like, is it commercially backed? Okay. If it's commercially backed, one of the, one of the things that we've been doing is looking at if it's, um, like if it's open core and um, not not really usable without a proprietary piece, then that kind of detracts from the criticality of the open source. Project. Oh, okay. But if it's uh, funded, that's fine. And then, or if they sell support or something like that. Are less popular today. Yeah. All right, this is good. How do we feel about Perl? <laughs> is it still I in think... OSs? Yes. And is Perl 6 out? It's less popular, I believe. Oh, it's definitely less popular, but I mean, it's definitely still widely used. <clears throat> and probably for some really old, you know, clunky, you know, automation things. I mean, it, it's, I, I vote that it's critical. I'm pretty sure that it's. <laughs> it's one of those that's, yeah, probably still in a lot of- You really of don't want to know where it's critical. <laughs> no, when, right. when, when it yeah. breaks you're going to be really sorry yeah it's yeah. probably like down in the depths of stuff which right right it does make it kind of like in my opinion a little less critical because again that same kind of like user path like is the user data going through a Perl script maybe not but maybe it's like the infrastructure that's keeping your whole thing up you know <laughs> yeah right so, i don't know but that, that's also like the rate of change on Perl code is probably very low as well so unless it's pulling from infrastructure that like CPAN or something like that, where um, someone could compromise CPAN and like get into someone's software supply chain via that. I'd like, I'd be surprised if it was easy to attack Perl itself. Um, like if people are writing new code frequently, it's in uh, um, not Perl. <laughs> um, uh, so it's like, yeah, I don't know. What what are we hoping to protect, like achieve, if we were to include Perl? Um, well, I mean, if it had a, an attack or a critical security bug that hasn't been found, you know, like how critical is that going to be? Hmm. The entire ecosystem, like probably. Pretty well, bad. well, let me put this another way: <laughs> is that how quickly would it get updated? Probably <laughs> so, pretty slow. So that's another. That's another yeah. point. Yeah. No, no, no but <laughs> let, 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 let me come at this from another direction. Is that again? This is not a question about how important is Perl for Linux. This is a question about how important is this open source software for the internet and the cloud in general. And let me tell you that 
Curl is important for AIX, and every single one of your bank accounts depends on AIX. Right. So <laughs> just from that perspective, it might be good that Pearl isn't completely crap. <laughs> right. And and yeah. even if a better, newer alternative is out there, which I'm sure there is, yes. it's it's probably still gonna be around for a long time. So we should say yes. I'll just say I think we should go yes, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go yes. All right, next we're at Puppet. I think we punted this four weeks ago when we didn't get it to it two weeks ago to decide yeah. if to get more <clears throat> discussion. Here. Well, it's like, I mean, you got Ansible, you got I'm like, how do we determine between their chef? I mean, they're what are like a, a handful, five, I mean, there's a you know, gazillion, but there are a couple of major and orchestration, whatever the heck you want to call these things, is Puppet. I think Puppet's part of the duop, and it's like Ansible, Chef, and Puppet, right? It was sort of that. And this Salt is around somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, there's Terraform, but that sort of tackles a different problem. So. Yeah, I think Puppet is quite popular and widely used. Yeah. But it's... Um, you know, and if it were subverted, like you could take over whole IT, whole companies, their whole IT system is, you know, you'd infect like every computer. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it, the question here was, is it, is the open source core um, a critical path or is it mostly the, you know, the enterprise version that's used? And uh, we didn't know the answer. <laughs> Uh, here's a question: How, like, how do you find that answer, uh, and will we find the answer? In t like, uh, somebody that has more domain time. knowledge, you, you uh, know, which we're hoping for that the bigger meeting, but well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Mm, okay. It just got me thinking a little bit about. Just our process, but I don't. I, I like the momentum we have. I don't want to. I don't want to detract. So, uh, all right. So we're still. Are we going to just punt puppet again? <laughs> yeah, let's let's punt it again. Let's punt it. Okay. Uh, registry. I think last time we talked about this, we didn't actually know, like the the Docker container, the Docker file it was pointing to was like not the code, but I updated the link here to source repo that github distribution distribution that's like the new uh location of the github i mean the docker or the container registry code so everybody that deploys their own registry uh, probably uses this code um, yeah that sounds bad if it got compromised but yeah, so yeah. I, think, I, I think anything like like I was saying with the, uh, the previous Kubernetes stuff, like if it, it's too new, but I think anything that's like used on, on like every single container deployment, like Kubernetes, the, the container, the the runtime, and then the registry, I think are are critical. Uh, look, it it includes Docker Hub and GitHub's container registry. That's like the majority of containers. Should we rename it here, though? <laughs> Um, so it's called distribution now, but it used to be called Docker. Like the Docker registry became was donated to OCI and it became distribution. <laughs> distribution, formerly known as. <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds good. All right, and it's got a yes. I would say you sold me on it. So but the, the Windows registry isn't important. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that's open source. Sentry, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would. Sentry is interesting, um, but it's a monitoring project, isn't it? Performance monitoring and error tracking. Yeah, I think going back to your point um, earlier, Jeff, it's. It doesn't seem like something that would that would cause serious uh, serious disruption. Look, the only th the only thing that it could 
be subverted by, oh, sorry, the, the, like, is that you're injecting code from the clients, uh, clients? Yeah, the, the agents into your application, into your websites. Um, so that, that is the, so it's not the same as like you've given it um, read access to your environment. So mm -hmm. in, in terms of the host itself, it's read, ac read access into the proprietary system, but the open source components are so agents here, that live in your code. Yeah, so they have here the SDKs. They like list out 20 SDKs for every language that you're supposed to, I assume, put in your, your application. Um, so that's kind of a dangerous thing is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's the bit where I'm like, it's not the same as a purely monitoring your infrastructure mm -hmm. read access um, agent. This is a it is in your code. So you include it into your code. And then we need to decide if it, is it popular. I say no. I'm yeah. leaning no. I'm leaning no. I would. I agree. Soda, soda fountain. <laughs> there really is an open source project for everything. <laughs> oh, the, the joy of this is seeing the crazy names there. <laughs> <laughs> soda oh, no, day in Japan, wow. They have their own day, I mean. It must be critical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, an, it's a Linux Foundation project. I didn't know that. At what point does are all the critical projects under the Linux Foundation? <laughs> well, that's the purpose of the Linux or the the, the end goal of the Linux Foundation, right? Mm. I can't even tell what this is by reading the readme. <laughs> <laughs> Open the data point. autonomy. It's about moving data around. I'm gonna lean now here. Uh, it's a framework. I'm reading the what is the Soda Foundation. I still don't quite understand. No, leaning no. An ecosystem of open source data management and storage software for data autonomy. Right. Um, I don't quite. It doesn't even seem like running software. No, it's like a, a bunch of Soda Foundation projects. Right. Um, All right. Yeah. I think we'll just go no and move on. Yeah. Um, I think I, my recommendation to whoever proposed it would be um, maybe you should include the explicit projects that are under it mm -hmm. rather than necessarily the, um, the, foundation, the foundation itself. Yeah. If there's a, yeah. Ooh, looks like we have an Apache project. Yeah, I mean, so it's so, solar. Yeah. Oh, no, solar, solar is, which is like, um, sits under search. things like, yeah. yeah. I mean, Lucene under is under is Elasticsearch and Solar and it's tuba. So, I think it's used open in source a... search software. Yeah. So, I mean, search software doesn't implicitly sound like it would have too many critical implications, but. I could definitely be wrong on that. Oh, no, this, why do you think that? I, I was just thinking about Jeff's comment earlier about the, the critical path. And you now when I think of, you know, things that, you know, directly, you know, affect the internet, things like that. Yeah, but this is like underlying, you know, search results for a bunch of websites. Yeah, like, APIs. You know, chat, kind of Docker, I mean, like, yeah, APIs uh, expose like search endpoints and stuff. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, that certainly makes sense. I, I'd say yes for solar. So it says it's powered by Lucerne. Lucene. Lucene. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, it's like, it's a layer of uh, tools. Like Lucene is the, like a tokenizer. Oh, like, yeah. Got all this wrong. Yeah. Well, I mean, it does like the low level. Sorry, if you go to. I was just saying, if you know Elasticsearch, I mean, Elasticsearch is based on Lucene and Solar is also based on Lucene. Lucene is the underlying engine. And then there is Elasticsearch, which you know, with the whole mm -hmm. licensing open, that whole you know, yeah. mess that's been going on. Solar is another search, search engine application that's also based on Lucene. 
But is Lucene the critical part or solar or both? It's both. <laughs> Both. Lucina and solar. Okay. Especially if it's an Apache project, it probably has widespread adoption. Yeah, I, I, I can, yeah, I agree here. But do we have Lucene or do we have it already or no? Or are we going to say it's both? We're going to this line. Good question. You might want to add a comment. But... Is it's it L U C I C E I? Uh, L U C A E N E. Yeah. It's not in ver version 1.0. I don't think it. Yeah, no, it's not in, on here at all. What is the difference between them? Uh, solar is car and Lucene is its engine. Okay. <laughs> 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 That's the stack overflow there. Right there. Yeah. Um, so solar is like an application you can use out of the box. Lucene is like the library underneath that makes it work yeah but what but what does bard say uh, all right <laughs> uh, sorry we... i'm just giving you a hard time sorry okay well maybe we should just say yes here to solar and then yeah. we yeah. can let somebody else like read into what that means <laughs> for this yeah. so, so and make their own inference you know <laughs> Solar is a web-based search engine that is built on top of Lucene. It's easier to use than Lucene and does not require any programming knowledge. However, it is not as customizable as Lucene. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lucene is a library that can be used to build a search engine. It is highly customizable. It can be used to create powerful search engines. Anyway. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, that was good. That was good. That was fun. Uh, so we are just about at time. So looks like the the but we're so close. I know we're so close, but we could probably knock these out in two weeks' time. What SQL Light is not in the list already? No, I I agree. I think it should be that somebody objected. Somebody was, was what, saying why that. was it obje objected? I don't well not yeah, objected, anyway. saying that we needed to have a it wasn't an I think obvious, it was me. Yes. I think it was me. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I think no, we need to discuss this. It's like, really? It's like it, it's the thing that stores your messages in iPhone. Like, it's anyway. So we'll just, yes, that please, one. yes. <laughs> we yeah, just okay. get that one and, yeah and I got one more. There, now. And there have been um, RCEs uh, via SQLite as well, like code execution via injection. Um, These two also, I'd so, say, are pretty out there, but. All uh, of, yeah, the, yeah, the bottom one, yeah, like, uh, PNG, JPEG, and ARC, yeah, it's like, I don't know why we need to discuss these. I, I, the only reason I discuss them is they're becoming less important from a, in some cases where they get sandboxed and pushed to the side. Not in every case, though. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, not everybody Maybe. uses good software engineering. That's true. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you all for the great discussion today. Definitely gave us a lot to think about. And uh, I look forward to seeing everyone who will be in Vancouver next week. And uh, otherwise, we'll see you in two weeks. Um, yeah, thanks again for making it this this uh, later in the day um, for the North American folks. Thanks for accommodating thanks, Australia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. It was great seeing you, Caleb. Great to see you. Yeah. Bye. 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 Oh, is it?